And the sad part is, with all of the tremendous work that we've done this weekend, whether it's Secretary Mnuchin or Secretary Pompeo, who had some outstanding, outstanding meetings, with all of this tremendous work that we've done, uh, the press doesn't even cover it. And the Democrats did this hoax during the United Nations week. It was perfect, because this way, it takes away from these tremendous achievements that we're taking care of doing, uh, that we're involved in, in New York City at the United Nations. So that was all planned, like everything else. It was all planned. And the witch hunt continues. But they're getting hit hard on this witch hunt, because when they look at the information, it's a joke. Impeachment for that? When you have a wonderful meeting or you have a wonderful phone conversation? I think you should ask. We actually, you know, that was the second conversation. I think you should ask for the first conversation also. I can't believe they haven't, although I heard there's a, there's a rumor out they want the first conversation. It was beautiful. It was just a perfect conversation. But I think you should do that. I think you should do. And I think you should ask for VP Pence's conversation, because he had a couple of conversations also. I could save you a lot of time. They were all perfect. Nothing was mentioned of any import other than congratulations. But the word is that they're going to ask for the first phone conversation. Uh, you can have it any time you need it. And also Mike Pence's conversations, which were, I think, one or two of them. They were perfect. They were all perfect. Uh, it's very sad what the Democrats are doing to this country. They're dividing. They're belittling. They're demeaning our country. So many leaders came up to me today, and they said, sir, what you go through, no president has ever gone through. And it's so bad for your country. People laugh at the stupidity of what they've asked for. And here we could do asylum. We could do all of these different things so easily. We could do asylum quickly. We could do loopholes, get rid of them. Instead, we actually make deals with Mexico and with Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras. And we're doing it with them instead of with our Congress. But we're doing it. We get it done. The wall is being built, by the way. It got little coverage. I went to the border. Uh, it's going up in New Mexico. It's going up in Arizona. It's going up in California, believe it or not. They really wanted that wall in California, in San Diego. As soon as it was completed, they said, we don't want a wall. They were begging me for a wall. I should take it out and move it to another location. We were with uh, the governor, spoke to him a lot, but the governor of Texas, the lieutenant governor of Texas, attorney general of Texas, the senators of Texas, Corn and Ted Cruz. And uh, we're building an incredible wall. That's uh, going to, number one, it's going to look great. It's going to be virtually uh, impossible to cross unless you're one hell of a mountain climber. Thank you, Mr. President. You've suggested that you didn't do anything wrong in, in the course of your conversations with the Ukrainian president. Um, but can you explain to the American people why it is appropriate for an American president to ask a foreign leader for information about a political rival, and what you would have said if you had discovered that Barack Obama perhaps had asked a foreign leader for information about you before yeah. you campaigned for the presidency? Well, that's what he did, isn't it, really, when you think about it? Look, that whole witch hunt was started, and hopefully that'll all come out. But there have been some fantastic books written that just came out, whether you uh, look at Greg Jarrett or uh, McCarthy's book that just uh, just came out recently, and so many other books. I mean, a lot of books are coming out. When you start reading those books, you see what they did to us. What they've done to this country is a disgrace. They've hurt this country very badly, and no other president should have to go through what I've gone through. Uh, the uh, president, the new president of Ukraine, is looking to stop corruption. Uh, there's a lot of corruption going on, and there was corruption. I just told you about senators that threatened him with votes and no money coming into Ukraine if they do things. That's really what people are trying to say that I did. But the only difference is I didn't do it. You take a look at that call. It was perfect. I didn't do it. There was no quid pro quo. But there was with Biden, and there was with these senators. Uh, and uh, they threatened. They said, you do this, you do that. We're not going to give you votes. That's that's the real deal. So we have a, an honest group of people 
that have been maligned. And, you know, it's a lot of people say I'll do, I'll do even better. I'm very happy. Yesterday, I guess we had a, a 53 poll, and a lot of people say add 10 points to anything. Anybody voting for Trump, you can add, anytime you get a poll, you can add 10 points or seven points or six points. Take it any way you want. But I don't know if I consider that to be a compliment. But in one way, it is a compliment. And I guess that's what happened in the last election. Far more people came to vote than anybody thought possible. So, so why should the American people then be comfortable with an American president asking a foreign leader for information about an American citizen? Well, I think you in can look campaign. at your senators, and you can look at Biden, and you can look at all these other people. But what we're looking for is corruption. A, an investigation started called the Russian witch hunt, affectionately, and it was a total phony scam. It was set up by people within the government to try and stop somebody from getting elected. And after that, per after that person, namely me, won, and convincingly won at 3.06 to 223 in the Electoral College, which, by the way, when you run a race, if you're running Electoral, you know, if you go by the college, the Electoral College, that's a much different race than running popular vote. And it's like the 100-yard dash or the mild, you train differently. And I can't help it that my opponent didn't go to Wisconsin and should have gone much more to Michigan and Pennsylvania and other places, but that's the way it is. We won an election convincingly, convincingly, and then you had the text message on, well, if she doesn't win, we've got an insurance policy. How bad was that? You know what the insurance policy, that's sort of what has been taking place over the last number of years, the insurance policy. Now, there are a lot of very dishonest people. Uh, we're the ones that played it straight. And you know what? The millions of people out there that are looking at what's going on, those people understand it. They see it, and they think it's disgusting. And our people are being hurt, and our country is being hurt. When a Nancy Pelosi allows her position to be taken over by radical far-left uh, socialists, or worse, uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, especially when the senators and all of these other people have actually done what they're accusing me of doing, which I didn't do.